you have to think really of the queue numbers existing everywhere. And it's really maybe the, the best way to understand it is it's like a wave. Um, so, you know, you get a, this quantum uh, crest of the wave in one point. And as that yeah. cr crest gets reduced, the neighboring one starts to go up, if you like. And the wave propagates point to point exactly at most, if you like, at the speed of light. It, it can never exceed the speed of light. Vladko, congratulations on your new book, uh, Portals uh, to a New Reality. I, I loved it. Very mind opening or mind bending uh, and uh, Thank you. Uh, controversial. So let's start with uh, discuss the foundations of quantum mechanics, which is the fundamental point of the book. And there are a whole lot of different interpretations of the foundations of quantum mechanics. Uh, I know some of them, the Copenhagen, um, which is more standard, the observer is critical and doesn't exist till you observe it. And what is an observer? You target that as misconceptions. But there, there are others, hidden variables in a pilot wave, a collapse of the wave function, relationship yes. physics, um, yes. uh, quantum Bayesianism, which is uh, yes. uh, perhaps the op polar opposite of, of what yeah. your view is. Uh, yes. And then, uh, the, uh, the, of course, the multi-world interpretation. So all these different interpretations. And basically, you say all of them are wrong. <laughs> yes, I, I think that's the, that's the gist. It's a one-word summary of, <laughs> of my view of the foundations. Um, of course, uh, uh, some of these interpretations, I think, are closer to truth, if you like, than, uh, than I, others. I, lo I, lo I love that, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, if you look at Copenhagen, maybe as the dominant one, yeah. that's maybe the most interesting one to analyze, um, that um, probably took a long time for that interpretation to solidify. I think it was really down to Niels uh, Bohr and his personality. And I think he went right. around there, argued against more or less everyone at that point. Uh, famous arguments with Einstein, of course, famous arguments uh, with Schrodinger as well, and many other uh, physicists at the time. And it seems to me um, that the view that emerged is that somehow our universe is really half, it's a hybrid, hybrid interpretation. It's half quantum, half classical. Of course, I'm oversimplifying, you know, lots of these things are um, like um, religion in the sense that even these different interpretations have their own denominations. So not <laughs> everyone will agree with, uh, with exactly what I'm saying. But I think most of Copenhagen people will agree that um, the classical context, the observer that makes the ultimate measurement of the quantum system is really necessary. It's, it's, it's paramount that they are really classical, that they use classical logic, classical information to communicate. And, and this, when we say when we say observer, just to clarify, uh, some people would interpret that as a conscious observer. But an observer can be anything; it can be a machine, it can be another atom, something that interacts with it. And that that's, that's right. Really, that's and an I, observer. That's right. That's an observer. And that's my point: that really we should not, uh, in fact, um, uh, bestow any special status on the observer. I, I like the way you put it: that in fact, any other physical system. Uh, ought to be able, if it has enough degrees of freedom, if it has enough capacity, ought to be able to really make that observation. So there is certainly nothing special about um, being alive, maybe, or being conscious in that context. Yeah, and the key, and your key to that is that you you, you would have both the observer and the observed uh, be quantum systems, and 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 when you do that, uh, if I if I get it right. It doesn't matter who's the observer and who's the observed. They're, exactly. completely, they're completely interchangeable. Yes. And that's the beauty of this concept of entanglement that Schrodinger uh, introduced. When two systems are entangled, and it really doesn't matter exactly as you put it, whether one system is a, is a cat, as, as Schrodinger uh, imagined it, and another system is just a, a radioactive um, decay of an atom. Um, uh, once they become entangled, 
then you can interchange the roles. You, you can say it's as much that the atom observes the state of the cat as the cat really <laughs> observes the state of the atom. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's a, uh, when I read that in your book, uh, Portals to New Reality, I, I, that was a, a nice a nice way to, to understand it at a deeper level, because as I would reflect on my views of each of the different interpretation of, of foundations, um, that sort of undercut them all. That, that each, each right. of them has either a break point between classical and, and quantum mechanical or some type of an interaction. But by saying it's all that way and, and you can re reverse the order yes. is, is a nice insight. I don't know if it's right, but it's nice insight. Yes, we don't know. You're, you're, you're right that, uh, of course, we don't know because we haven't done experiments uh, at all of these levels. But everything so far really suggests to us that, uh, that uh, things uh, behave this way. Um, and I think that's the, uh, that's the insight. Now, what's interesting is, you know, when you say something like this, people say, but wait a second. Um, I, 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 and this is completely mistaken. People say, but I never see a superposition. If you really claim that I'm a quantum object as well, and I look at a quantum superposition, how come I don't see a superposition? And actually, that's exactly what quantum mechanics tells us, that you will never see a superposition. That's the beauty of it. And it's precisely because of the Heisenberg uncertainty. And that's, I think, the problem with engaging classical entities with quantum. That's why I think most of these interpretations get it wrong, because as soon as you couple objects that obey different kinds of physics, you're going to mm. to a contradiction. You're exactly going to be asking these kind of questions. So the beauty of this experiment is that each of these observers, if you want to interchange them, sees a really well-defined classical reality. There is no paradox there, actually. They themselves are convinced that they've made a classical-like, apparently classical observation, and, and yet the whole thing together exists in a quantum mechanical state. I think you express this very nicely by saying all of quantum physics, total understanding can be pretty much captured by four no's, no collapses, no quantum jumps, no observers, and no C numbers, which are classical. Uh, That's it. Numbers. That's it. I like this way of communicating very much the, the negative way by, by ruling things right. out. I think John Wheeler also liked to express himself that way. Yeah. Um, so one of the implications of that, that you, you stress in the book, uh, Portals of New Reality, is that entanglement where you measure something here and you get a result and instantly you know if it's entangled with a particle on the other side of the universe what what that is there and that sounds like it's uh, uh exceeding it sounds like instantaneously violating the the speed limit of the universe is the speed of light and i know no information yes. can go there but you make the point that when you understand quantum mechanics your way, that the entanglement paradox disappears because it's all somehow local and didn't quite see the mechanism for that. Yeah, that's 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 exactly the, the point. I think it's a it's a very important uh, thing that you raise now because. Um, we know that there are interpretations. You mentioned the, the Broly bomb, the hidden variable interpretation. So there are interpretations where you can actually um, hang on to the classical um, C number based reality. However, the big price that you pay then is that your theory really must become uh, non-local. So in order to account for the entanglement experiments that we've been doing, uh, you must allow instantaneous transfer of information between entangled systems. And yes, then you can explain, you, you can actually uh, maintain the classical position and the classical momentum. You don't need to upgrade them to Q numbers. But it seems to me that this is a huge price to pay, given that relativity has been tested so well and there is no deviation. It, it's a big thing to give up, which is why I insist on these Q numbers. So if you look at everything in terms of Q numbers, then the, the way that the information propagates is literally from one um, point in space to the neighboring point. And you can see how this propagates in a perfectly causal way and it fully obeys 
relativity. So how, how does that work? How does that local, the, the Q numbers the, the, work? In... The Q numbers, you have to think really of the Q numbers existing everywhere. And it's really maybe the, the best way to understand it is it's like a wave. Um, so, you know, you get a, this quantum uh, crest of the wave in one point, And as that yeah. cr crest gets reduced, the neighboring one starts to go up, if you like. And the wave propagates point to point exactly at most, if you like, at the speed of light. It, it can never exceed the speed of yeah. light. Yeah, but, but that's not, it, that doesn't give you an instantaneous doesn't give you an instantaneous uh, at all. How, and, how do you get the inst how do you get the in instantaneous in, in, uh, testing of the entanglement? Thing? That's the point. You don't actually. That, that you don't need it at all to account for these correlations. You just must really keep everything um, uh, described in terms of these Q numbers. So instantaneous only comes up if you. In if you're classical. That's yeah. it, if you're classical. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Okay, well, I'll have to think about that a little, a little bit yes. more. because that, that is really a key point of what you're making. That's and, a key point because, remember, Bell, Bell's inequality is, yeah. is based on two assumptions. One is, that, um, one is that you assume this classical reality, and the other one is that you assume this locality. Right. And the two together we know are violated. And now the question is which of these... <laughs> Two right. assumptions, uh, are, and I'm arguing that we should actually, um, we should simply give up the C number based reality. We should acknowledge that everything is made of Q numbers. And then we don't have to worry about uh, non-locality. It simply isn't there. So Vladko, what about uh, quantum Bayesianism or cubism, cubism as it's uh, called, which uh, t to my um, amateurish way of thinking, it's 180 degrees opposite from what you say. They say it's all the observer and there's no other reality. <laughs> yes. Yet. Yeah. So uh, what do you make of that? Yes, I think this is very much along the lines that, uh, that the world uh, only exists when we observe it. Um, it's an interpretation that um, tries to view quantum mechanics in the same way as we view statistical mechanics, that actually the states, quantum states, are all the states of our knowledge. It's all in our head, really, rather than out mm -hmm. there uh, in, in our reality. Again, I think um, the reason why I think this view fails ultimately is because if you want to describe the observer uh, themselves, whatever you think holds this information and writes these quantum states will ultimately have to be described by physics. And when this observer engages with the rest of the universe that you already acknowledged uh, obeys the rules of quantum mechanics, then it becomes um, very difficult to consistently account for all the physical properties jointly of these systems. Mm. So my claim is that actually you won't be able to satisfy energy, momentum, conservation, uh, all sorts of other things like the equivalence principle will be out of the window if you really assume that the observer is classical. All right, the next one, exactly the opposite, is a multi-world interpretation of quantum mechanics, which, which says that take the wave function seriously, which means it never collapses, which means that it has to have all the different possibilities expressed in its own kind of branching multiverse at the quantum level. There are different kinds of multiverses in cosmology with in, in, in inflation theory. Yes. And uh, so we use the term multiverse, but they're radically couldn't be more yes. different from each other so That's it's a true. bad term as it's used same term is used in cosmology as in uh, the multi-world interpretation and that to me is is not good um so why is it the closest and and uh you know i have obviously many friends who believe this and it's very very knowledgeable and smart physicists and you know it, that always seems if, if reality is like that you know that's pretty bizarre Yes, I, I think it is the closest. Uh, what I would object to, and actually, uh, many people, again, th th there are so many different denominations of, of many <laughs> worlds as well there, that it's difficult to bunch them together. But my main, main objection uh, would be that um, the name suggests, again, some kind of classical limit to this theory. So it says something like there are many of these classical looking universes, uh -huh. and then we put the superposition on top. I think quantum mechanics, in fact, 
gives you a, an exponentially bigger picture of reality. There are all sorts of possible states in which you can't even discriminate between these different uh, branches of reality. And then the key point there is that you could, at least in principle, if the universe is quantum mechanical, you could envisage bringing these realities back together to interfere them. And th that's actually what my book ultimately explores. What would happen if we confirm that there are multitude of these realities, but then at the end, we really interfere them quantum mechanically? What does that really mean? And I think this goes beyond uh, what uh, people like Everett uh, envisaged. Yeah, for, for sure it does. And th th that seems to be more than difficult. That seems to be impossible if these, uh, these, these branching universes already are going out on their own and existing on their own level to, uh, to bring them back. That doesn't sound credible. You're right. That, that's a question of, uh, that really is a question of technology. And I think we know we can do that up to a certain uh -huh. uh, limit. If you have a molecule that's not too complicated, certainly you can entangle it to a, to a simple atom, for instance, then disentangle it and show that it's reversible. Already when we are talking about things like a photo detection, this seems beyond anything we can do at the moment. So when a photon gets detected by a detector, it'd be very interesting to probe how uh, far down that cascading chain could we actually stop that detection and reverse it and interfere it. And I think, again, th these are hugely interesting experiments. And uh, so then how, how do you distinguish between your Q numbers as a fundamental reality, quantum numbers as, as in, in getting rid of classical numbers, getting rid of C numbers, focusing on Q numbers and the multi-world uh, interpretation? Uh, how do they articulate? I think the, dif uh, the difference would be that the multi-world is really one very special case uh, uh -huh. of of the reality that i'm talking about it's really the reality where um these uh branches have become uh solid and as you say probably irreversible for all practical purposes whereas actually i'm envisaging the opposite extreme to that in which case we can't even talk about branches in the first place it's just these q numbers that have their own uh, existence so, and dynamics all the Q numbers are existing with uh, almost an infinite number of possibilities in the, in the same reality as opposed to... In the brain. same. That's right. I, I would say there is only one universe. It's just quantum through and through. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us and thanks for watching.